Hey there, everyone. It is Bob Martin, the RC Sub Guy with the Nautilus Drydocks.com, and I uh, wanted to share with you some work that we're doing on uh, a really cool little German Class 212 that we got uh, from a customer to get it in here, get some repairs done and upgrades before he's here on Friday. Uh, it's currently Tuesday, so we've got a little bit of time, but there is a lot to do on the boat, so uh, let's take a look. All right, here is Jason. He is uh, working to modify the Fairwater plane linkages. We're going to get to that in a second, but first I want to give you an overview. This is the Type 212 model kit package as offered and assembled by Dan Danny Engelhart from Maximus Modelbau out of Germany. It's a slick little system. Um, kind of like it, it's it's very much borrows a lot of inspiration from Engel's uh, Type 212, which I believe is the exact same scale, if I am not mistaken. Um, so we got this main watertight cylinder here and that, uh, you know, the equipment tray goes inside. You got a bayonet seal. And the whole idea behind it is that this module bolts to the, the rear section right here like this. And then you've got access to the interior via this uh, magnetically attached hatch. So you can access the linkages and then you can also slip your hand up and turn the model on and off with this switch. Pretty slick, kind of like it. Um, some interesting things going on in here. That is a monstrous, monstrous motor. Um, this would typically be on something probably twice the size of this boat. But I mean, obviously, this is a good thing. It's not a problem at all. Um, the other thing that's kind of interesting are these uh, these little seals that he has here. These are compression seals, and I imagine there's probably a little O-ring inside, but this is basically steel wire. It's super thin and, and flexible. Um, not typically the way I would do things, um, but it allows you know flexibility on the inside here where the servo is to flex back and forth as it swings through its arc. So I think that's probably why he did that. Now when we got this thing, so this was all shattered to heck. All of this outside was broken off. Um, we took all the pieces, we've re-adhered them. We're gonna see if these are gonna hold up once we bolt it um, to the back here. Um, I think we're gonna be okay. So, uh, you know, we'll, we'll double check and see. Um, another interesting thing, my, my customer, Howard, um, wants to have fully functional fairwater planes, which is extremely problematic in this boat because the entire hull is one piece with the exception of this back part. So running the linkages from the sail up uh, through the, the body and back is problematic. The solution that Danny came up with was magnetic. So he's got a gigantic magnet glued on this servo right here. And uh, the idea is this lines up with this pad and then a magnetic connector on the fairwater planes it moves back and forth in time with this. Um, a couple problems, as this goes through its arc, it's going to move away from the wall here. The other problem with this is that magnets are extremely strong in line, parallel to the uh, lines of magnetic force, but they're very, very weak perpendicular. And this, unfortunately, is moving perpendicularly. Um, so what we've done is we've taken the magnet off and Jason is extending the linkage, as you can see there. Is, is that glued on now? No, you just slipped on. So we'll, uh, we're going to end up gluing that so that you can um, do that. And that's going to run all the way out the back over the top. And then we're going to have a connector uh, back here on the inside, just like with the other stuff. So that is the idea there. Um, and an unfortunate problem with CA. If you guys haven't seen this before, and anything clear, cyanoacrylate, clouds, and Mars, uh, anything clear plastic. So this is all fogged, uh, and there's CA on the inside of this. So a bit of a cosmetic marring, unfortunately, for this particular boat, but it certainly won't affect the performance. Um, I literally just got this. I'm not entirely sure. I don't even know if this is a, you know, a 7.4 volt system or an 11.1 volt system. I've got to reach out to Danny and Howard and find out what it is. Um, I, 
I don't even know if this is like a rubber uh, bladder inside here or what. Something is loose inside and I don't want to open this up to find out what it is because that looks like it would be a very long and involved process. Um, here's the pump right here that snaps on the end. We got our receiver, pitch controller, and then a pocket for the battery. Um, unfortunately, the 11.1 volt battery I was hoping to use is too big. Uh, won't fit, almost does, but won't quite fit. So um, that's a bust. We, uh, but if it's a 7.4 volt system, then this won't work anyway. So we don't need to worry about it. This weight also came loose. Uh, problematic because it's way up here in the front. Uh, I'm going to have to see if Logan might be able to get his arm up there and silicone that down to the bottom. Um, when we got it, this periscope was broken off, this dive plane was broken off and completely shattered actually. We had to completely rebuild this. Um, this was all broken. The stock prop that they had, uh, it was a resin printed prop, That's that was all broken. So. We're in repair mode. Um, just wanted to show you what this kind of looked like, and we're going to keep going and see if we can make this repair stick. So, another issue going on. We got the rear linkage for the one set of rudders attached after much consternation. And uh, this is what we end up with for a throw. nothing like virtually nothing and there's a lot of flex in here too oh man well we're gonna take this off we got looks like we've got one more rung we can go out on the servo to increase the throw a little bit and I think maybe what we'll do is we'll try and sleeve this with 1 16th brass all the way back and all the way forward and then we'll have to use two wheel collars to pinch it and then that'll be way more rigid. So here is our solution. You can see that long bar of brass and that's going to be much stiffer than the, the wire that uh, we've got there. And uh, another exciting development, the resin printed bulkhead here broke through just just from resting our oh these are all broken all of these that's super exciting so we're probably going to need to back all these out tap it for a bigger screw countersink and have the big head pull down on the top <sighs> All right, I think we've got this figured out. So the old screws holding that on looked like this. The new screws look like this. Um, and they mate, you know, all around the outside there. Now I've yet to see if this will mate flush with this. Hopefully there's at least a little bit of a gap. If not, I'm going to have to countersink all of these, which will be a bit of a pain in the butt. Um, this resin is not very strong. It's really brittle. I've got pretty extensive experience printing with resin and uh, you have to get the right stuff. We stumbled on some really good um, stuff. It's more like ABS plastic. It's got a lot of give to it. This is super brittle. Um, this gray stuff, I, I might even be tempted to think this is the water washable resin that we tried there for a while. But at any rate, this is kind of what's going on here. I'll show you what this looks like. Let's see if I can find the switch. There we go. So this is how the X-tail works. Left and right, and then up and down. With the extra throw, it looks like it's working good. So, one issue down, and 10 to go. All right, day two of playing around with the boat here. Uh, not that we've only been working on the boat, but um, we removed the horn with the magnet 
And uh, now we've got uh, 1 16th brass rod running out the back. Um, initially, it looks like Danny had planned to have an output just like this. He had one of these seals in. We pulled that out, put his 1 16th seal in place there. So now we've got an exit, an, an output shaft uh, going from here, and it works really, really good. Um, now the challenge is we've got to put everything back together again and somehow get this output up around the corner to those die planes. So let's put some, everything back together again. All right, here is the solution that came up with. We've got like a U bracket. Comes, this is the linkage for the four die plane. Comes out to this sleeve that's fully adjustable right here. Goes straight back to a magnet held in a wheel collar. And uh, let me see if you can focus down there for you. There you go. And that goes to a magnetic connector that runs up to the die planes. But um, we can't test this until we get the new battery for this unit. Is built for a very specific battery um, that's coming tomorrow sometime so hopefully we'll have it in time to do something before the end of the day because the customers coming at 8 o'clock on Friday so there you go okay all the repairs are finished on this boat the only thing left to do is to bring it to the pond and do some uh, final uh, tests for it and before we do that, I wanted to share with you how everything looks, how everything uh, works, because it is kind of a cool boat. So let's, uh, let's give it a try here. I'm going to turn the radio on. Um, let's let's uh, see what we got going on here. So here's our rudders and dive planes, or the quad rudders, whatever you want to call it. Um, and you'll notice that the forward dive planes are connected to that. So they all work together in conjunction. And you can also have the override for the dive planes on channel six there if you just want those forward planes to work. And then the other neat thing is uh, these lights work on uh, a separate channel as well. So um, this is kind of it. This is uh, ready for the pond. Um, neat boat, nice size. I like it a lot. Got some quirks. I'm not a huge fan of this bayonet style split. I know some people like it, but there's uh, drawbacks to it. Uh, not the least of which is you have zero access whatsoever to the inside of your boat for the placement of ballast, for the placement of foam, for working on linkages. Um, like right now, basically, you need to do a proctology work through this little opening to get to the linkage up here um, yeah not super excited I, I will say Danny did a stupendous job on the finish of this boat you would never know that this was 3d printed absolutely beautiful smooth finish on these parts so there you go a uh, little overview for you on some repairs that we undertook for a uh, customer or his uh, 212 submarine um, it took a lot of time, but uh, it's functional right now, provided things go well at the uh, pond. You can get this thing out of here and uh, get back on my projects. So, if you like what you see, please do like and subscribe. It helps me out a lot. This is Bob Martin, the RC sub guy with the Nautilus Drydocks.com. Catch you next time.